I'm Kate Gilbert, and I'm one of the co-instructors for this class that you're seeing right behind me, uh, Food Science and Human Nutrition 412, it's Food Product Development, and it's the capstone course for both food science and culinary food science. So if you are not used to food science or know what that major is, it's everything to do with food. So how do we make sure that we get safe food to you, how do we make sure that we get consistent food to you, and new food, so new food products that you see in the grocery store shelves. And that's what this class does. Um, you're in a team and for the entire semester, you decide on your new product. You figure out how to make it, you figure out how to make it on bigger equipment, and you figure out how to make a legal label, a package, and figure out how to sell it. So it's a lot of fun, um, it's a lot of problem solving, um, it's a lot of real world experience. Um, we get industrial ingredients in, ones that you probably don't have in your pantry at home, but you see on ingredient decks. Uh, we work with those, we figure out how to use them. We work with different types of equipment in here to figure out how the food will really be made on a large scale. And then we have industry board members who come in and review the products and provide feedback. So, it's a lot of fun. This is one of the many fun classes you can take if you're in food science. We'd like to have a lot of hands-on fun classes for you to be able to learn in. So our product is called the Tuxedo Latte Bomb. Um, our idea came from a hot chocolate bomb, if you're familiar with that. Um, it's kind of an instant bomb you just put right in your hot water to make hot chocolate. So we took that idea but made it a latte. So we'll have a, a chocolate shell and inside we'll have coffee, sugar, um, instant cream and milk and then a little bit of sugar and then mix it all up inside that shell and close it up and then you got your instant latte bomb. All you have to do is put it right in a cup of hot water. So I think the main challenge we had was getting all the flavors to mix perfectly. Uh, there's a lot of trial runs where we maybe had too much coffee, too less coffee, maybe too much chocolate, or not enough chocolate. Uh, so just getting that perfect mixture of each ingredient for the perfect flavor and texture of our product. That would be our probably our biggest challenge. Uh, one of the successes is our mold size. Our mold is a perfect size for fit in a cup, which uh, fit the perfect amount of chocolate for the flavor. Um, so everything just fit perfectly, and then once we were able to get all the flavors mixed uh, so we can have the the taste we were desiring, uh, just all mixed up in one, it worked out really good. Our group's project is a um, sweet potato ravioli. Um, sweet potato has been a trend for the last like 10 years. You kind of see it being thrown into almost any different variety of products. Um, and we really wanted to create a gourmet experience at home, so we decided to do a ravioli. And the, what's unique about our project is we have the sweet potato actually in the pasta, so we're kind of bringing in that vegetable aspect into the actual dough. Through our research, we haven't found any um, products similar to what we're doing. There's been products that say they are, but they use um, different ingredients to color their dough instead of actually using the raw sweet potato or tomato uh, products. One of our largest challenges was we wanted to make a brown butter sauce and brown butter sauces cannot be uniform throughout production just because it can be difficult to make sure the butter heats to the amount it needs to be or um, gets to the right color. So we had to kind of um, test out some different products like um, brown butter pastes or powders to get that brown butter flavor and color without having that additional heating step to kind of keep it more um, similar and easy to reproduce. Probably our biggest success was our pasta dough. We really haven't had to alter our formulation at all. We incorporated different flours, but um, from the start it was really successful and a super um, trustworthy and easy dough to use. The name of our product is Protein Power Pops and it's essentially a vegan um, completely vegan protein popsicle and it is a good source of protein so it does have um, six grams of quality protein. Our inspiration was that plant-based um, proteins are really trending and popsicles are really good easy way to, for a quick snack and just something that people really busy people can just kind of consume quickly and so we thought that we would make it a good source of protein to just make it easier for people that are vegan to um, be able to consume protein easier. So this is actually something really unique um, it's not really seen on the market we're actually using heart pet hemp heart protein um, instead of something like chia or pea protein because um, it actually gives the popsicle a very creamy flavor over um, the other proteins that we found that made it very gritty and had a very off flavor um, as well as it's a pretty good source of quality protein and so we didn't have to use as high of amounts as if we were to use um, a different type of vegan protein. Um, at the beginning when we were going through our formulation um, aspect of 
this class, we really struggled with finding a good peach um, source. So we tried canned peaches, um, and we didn't want to use fresh peaches just because those go bad so fast. So we went to frozen peaches, and um, we also did a mixture of the two, and we found that the canned peaches gave it more of an off flavor. And so as we were kind of developing it, we really struggled to one, mask the texture of the protein powder. And so when we switched, it was a really good alternative for us because we found that it actually um, completely eliminated that problem. And just really increasing the peach flavor of our protein um, popsicle was like the second big struggle that we had. And so we were able to kind of incorporate um, purees as well as a natural um, peach flavor to our popsicle to really bring out the peach flavor and it's been really good so far and so we're excited to see where it goes. I think it was really awesome that we were able to um, work with some food companies in order to get some very unique types of proteins that aren't seen on the market and so we were able to use those and essentially be able to make this awesome product where you the protein actually adds flavor to the popsicle by making it creamy um, rather than taking away and having us work towards hiding the protein powder. So that's really awesome. Hopefully something that we're going to see um, increasing in popularity in the market. Um, along with that, just being able to try different sweeteners and other additives that are completely vegan and just seeing how those um, work together has been really cool. This class, you get to design a product from start to finish, and that doesn't mean just creating a product. So this is starting from um, just kind of raw ingredients going to industrial ingredients. So we're using those um, industrial flours, we're using a powdered egg, we're using um, different types of cheese powders to kind of get the same formulation we had from our raw ingredients into a more uniform and safe um, industrial product. And so through the class, we kind of are doing what you would expect to see in a factory setting or a plant setting in just a small kitchen in a lab here on campus. This class is basically like a culmination of all the classes that we've been taking um, throughout our four years here. And it's really interesting because it's not just being creative and being able to throw something together in the kitchen. It's really understanding what additives do and what their functionality is, as well as, um, you know, problem solving with for us it would be proteins, like the solubility and the texture and what other um, aspects go into that and not a lot of people know about quality protein and that has, a lot, that has a lot to do with the digestibility of it and that plays into our nutrition label, which is so important for any food product going out there. Um, as well as, you know, when we're thinking about the actual processing aspect of it, we need to think about, um, you know, f hazards that might go into it, education of our employees, um, shelf stable um, ingredients that actually go into our product and then sending it out to consumers and actually seeing if they like it and being able to market it um, with the packaging um, that not only keeps it safe from microbials and other um, contaminants but also is appealing and so just kind of bringing all those things together from all the different classes that we've had um, really to just make a product as a whole and create a whole production line of it.